What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Freestyle Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by Amanda in studio. Allie is via Zoom. She had a COVID lunch. There was an exposure. We're going we to hold off for a few days and yeah. see what, she what happens. She, to date, does not have it, but yes. responsibly let us know that she had lunch with someone she later found out has he, it. He, took, he lovingly took the test as soon as I had left, which was interesting Thoughtful. timing. <laughs> I, I do think COVID has really like tested, like, especially now that we're in this stage where like, I know a lot of people who were like taking things very seriously, but now are a little bit looser. Like, I think now in this specific era, it's really testing like how honest you are when no one's watching, you know, because it's mm -hmm. like, you know, when you have symptoms and when you should take a test and when you're like, oh, but I really want to go to this thing. I, I have a friend who took it very seriously. And by like, they, I, I've seen him once in two years. Like him and his wife and his kid, they haven't done shit. They, they have isolated. And recently they have a, a celebrity friend and that's part of their circle. And this celebrity friend did a meet and greet in Florida. Didn't tell him about the meet and greet, had dinner, gave him COVID. And I'm just like, what? Come on. <laughs> You're just shaking everyone's hand. Yeah. If that's the one way you can get COVID. A hundred percent. And it's also yeah. like, you know, which of your friends are most concerned about it and like what kinds of information they would like to know to make informed decisions. Yeah. And mm. so it's very much a, like an exercise in like self-restraint. <laughs> it is. Well, we're glad so far, Ellie, that you don't have it. Uh, also, another person who doesn't have it. Uh, our guest, <laughs> knock on wood, Seamless. Uh, KP Parker is with us today. Hello, feeling healthy. How are you? <laughs> good, yeah. <laughs> feeling good? Yeah. Uh, I found uh, KP on TikTok and uh, I thought she was hilarious. <laughs> and so I was just like, you should come on our podcast. Oh, yeah. And here she is. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Excited to be here. KP Parker. Mm -hmm. What a name. And you've recently Powerful. changed it. Well, like five years. Yeah, I changed. Oh, five? That's not recent. No. Well, it's been a quick five years. Okay. <laughs> but no, I just, uh, yeah, I was going by my like legal birth name and then I was like, I thought similarly to you and I was like, oh, it's fun when people have initial names and I like when people call me KP. It I rings. I just do that full time. Yeah. There's no rules. Yeah. And KP is <laughs> unique. I, when, I, yeah. when I DM'd you to come on, I was like, I guess it's KP. Yeah. Must, is it? Is it yeah. KP? I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah. Only other one is Kim Possible. She really oh my she gosh. really did it for us. That <laughs> was the first thing I thought about when I dyed my hair red was I was like, oh. I can be Kim Possible for Halloween now. Yeah. Good. Smart. <laughs> but KP, it has it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> I don't know who Kim Possible is. Oh wow, my God. That's interesting. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> is that is that an omission I should not? In your mind, what is she? Yeah. Right now. <laughs> like a some sort of like superhero for okay. kids great yeah sure. she's she's a cartoon like yeah. uh she's got that friend with the naked mole rat ron and stoppable ron stoppable and rufus the naked mole rat and she uh she kind of stops crime i would say right she Villains. stops crime she's just generally a badass yeah. okay all right i feel like before uh girl boss became co-opted and controversial <laughs> and like a bad thing to be i think you could make a case that she was like an original girl boss yeah yeah She's just like absolutely fighting people. Also, the main villain, uh, Shigo, was also a woman. I don't know. Looking back at Kim Possible, I'm like, I feel like I have in my head an image of who it is. Cartoon redhead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A quick reminder, we pushed, uh, as you guys know, maybe maybe you don't know, Thursday, going deeper with Fibula. And uh, back to our regular scheduled programming next Monday. Uh, we have a lot to get into this episode. Uh, I think do we? T I think we just knock out the Bachelor talk and then Mom talk. Uh, it's been going all over TikTok. Mm -hmm. We were gonna have Taylor on this podcast. I spoke with her on the phone. Whoa. She was gonna fly out. She. I was like, hey, I reached out. I was like, I don't know if you know, I host the podcast. I gave her all the the things. I tell people why they should come on and. And then she, apparently she listens. She's like, oh, yeah, oh, I, know, wow. I, know your, I know your podcast. Uh, I listen. And then she was like, should I come out? 
or should we? Because I offered to Zoom. I was just like, "Hey, we can we can Zoom this." And the, but she offered to come out. And then I was like, "Well, let's hop on the phone." And me and Shanti, my uh, our producer, mm-hmm. we hopped on the phone and talked. And then and then we'll table we'll table it. We'll tell the story. But then we'll get into. And if you don't know what mom mom talk, the it's basically there's this situation mm-hmm. of influencers who reside in Utah who identify as Mormon. And one of these couples uh, came out and talked and mentioned that her and her husband are getting divorced. Her name is Taylor. That's the person I talked to. And uh, they also, she went on a live and talked how they were in this group of soft swingers, <laughs> which I first time I ever heard that term is on the phone with her. And um, anyways, we'll discuss. We'll discuss. I'm but already like, are there like so many medium firm <laughs> swingers? Like, I want to know the spectrum. That's of what swingers. you call a soft tease. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then we'll get into uh, we are in the jury deliberation of the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Uh, we'll we're in the final stretch. We'll, we'll discuss what we think will happen. And if we were on the jury, how would we vote? Uh, we haven't, I, I thought the final day that we, we haven't talked since the uh, f- closing statements. Amber Heard was on the uh, stand one more time and really shit the bed. No pun intended, I thought. Oh we'll uh, get into that. So let's, uh, Allie, take it away. Yeah. So moving right into Bachelor T, uh, friends of Nick, friends of show, friends of all of us, uh, Becca and Thomas are engaged. Yeah, congratulations. Um, she, she proposed to him. Um, and her caption on Instagram said, in the ultimate plot twist, he said, yes, we've been keeping this secret just between us and close family and friends for a while, but we're excited to shout it from the rooftops. Did you know, Nick? I knew that Thomas was shopping for rings because I know the person he got his ring from because I'm related to them. <laughs> um, but I had no idea about all this other stuff. So I knew the engagement was on the horizon. And do you Thomas. think Thomas will now propose to her? I don't, a double why? proposal? I don't. That's. Do you think he should? I don't think he should. I don't think he needs to. I yeah. think maybe just give the ring that he got, but yeah, I don't think it has just, to be on one knee. Yeah, I don't. I feel like that would take away from what Becca did. Yeah. That would almost be like, okay, that was a fun little party trick. Well, let mm-hmm. me do the real thing. I, I think it would minimize the proposal, and I, I love that she she did that. Like. I think if he did do it again, then she'd have to do it again. And it would be a big <laughs> it would be like a, Yeah. It'd be like looking in a <laughs> mirror. Yep. Like to, and it just never, it never ends. You're going to have you know? to cut it somewhere. I think now so that time. last person talking. <laughs> I, I think they're great. I've gotten to know Thomas. Um, one of my favorite redemption arcs. Like, Thomas is the reason why. And for all you Basher fans out there, when you hate it so much <laughs> that I as you call, play devil's advocate with the villains like Shanae and just simply suggest maybe they shouldn't burn in hell <laughs> from what we watched on edited reality TV because everyone was calling Thomas a narcissist and you know Katie spent a week with him and warned people about him and all these things. And he is a delightful, dorky, charming man who like you know, good for him. And boy, people were so hard on him for a long time (laughs) and said some really nasty things about him all because reality TV told you to. So just remember Thomas next, next season when inevitably someone comes on and says or does some shit and you all want to crucify him and you want me to crucify them too. (laughs) Thomas is our poster child for why we, why we like just temper you know, hatred in any direction towards one person. Speaking of engagements, Michelle was seen without her engagement ring, sparking split rumors. Of course, the internet sleuths did their thing. We're looking at how many liked, when the most recent liked photo was with Nate, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in actuality, it was just that her friend tried on her engagement ring while they were out. Someone snapped a photo in the split second that was happening. And then things spiraled from there. But they haven't bought a house together And I think there were some other things kind of leading people to question how serious or kind of how things were going with Michelle and Nate. And then she wrote something? Yes. She said, okay, I typically don't come on here and address these types of things, but because I received so, in all caps, many messages about it, dot, 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 
So how Ali many, does not read the punctuation. Is what I'm realizing. How many? How many? How many uh, messages do you think so is? Oh, oh, that's a good one. Seventy. Oh, I was thinking More? like twelve. Michelle, I feel like Michelle probably gets a lot. Yeah, you're probably right. More than 12. I bet it's more like 12. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it feels like a lot, but I bet it wasn't 70. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of how many DMs we get if there's something that like happens on the podcast that a lot of people respond to. Sure. Like got, yeah. 20? Yeah, probably. Anyway, so okay. many. There's a video circulating of me on a rooftop this weekend, and I'm not wearing my engagement ring. To the person who is paying close enough attention to catch that moment, you also have to be paying close enough attention to see that one of my good friends briefly, to see one of my good friends briefly remove my engagement ring to try it on and then place it back on my finger. Just a friendly reminder that Nate and I, we are human beings, not a zoo exhibit. Not to mention, videoing somebody without them knowing is creepy. It's not cool. Nice read. <laughs> I really felt for her <laughs> after I, that. I feel like she gave us the teacher moment with the line, uh, if you were paying close enough attention yeah. to yeah. that, I was like, oh, was yeah, like, get up. I mean, I get her frustration. I really do. I just don't feel like those messages ever really come across the way they're intended mm -hmm. to. And yes, they're not zoo exhibits. That is obvious. But they are a reality TV couple that their platform is based off of that and these are common questions yeah. you know it's the i guess the the price one pays i suppose i i do i don't think uh social like I've, instagram is not a love language i mean <laughs> you can definitely not post on someone I, on actually that's really interesting to think about what? social media as a love language because mm. I, I think for some people it really is it's sort of like a form of words of affirmation, but it's like... No, I think it's a validation platform. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's a love language. I mean, so many like... I don't think it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think any real love is being shared through couples. Yeah. Right? Like... I feel like more often than not, when I see people that are overly posting their relationship, yeah. I'm like, that's... Red flag. Red flaggy. Right? So I think if anything, it's... And so like, you know, -love I... Like, certainly, like, Natalie and I will post stuff, but it's not for us. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not like, I'm not like, oh. I really wish Oh, my God. Thank you. I wore that cute outfit and I couldn't help but notice you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's the yeah. things that we say to each other behind, like, the, the other stuff is aren't quite literally for, it's, it's for the audience, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Because yep. it's not like. You know, I mean, if she makes like a, a sweet video, I'll see it before she posts it. And I'm like, oh, that's really sweet. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You know, but it's once it's out in the world, it's it's not for us anymore. Yeah. But I don't know. The Nate, the Nate and Michelle of it all, they uh, listen. I, I, I think they have every right to live their life however they want and be more private than public. That's fine. And maybe that says nothing about the relationship. That said, they're 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 public behavior historically might suggest it is it they're is, not attached at the head it is curious yes mm. it is they 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 seem very they seem like a very independent couple that would be best case and they were gifted two hundred thousand dollars to buy a house and they haven't seemed to done, have done that mm. so you know and, and maybe they are more methodical and more uh you know, maybe the more M Michelle, very mature person, you know, teacher who like think probably is very thoughtful in her decisions is probably thinking, hey, I got engaged on a TV show. Sure, I got $200,000. Let's not rush. That's possible. Mm -hmm. But also like history tells us as it relates to like bachelor couples that who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I wonder if this would have been the reaction to a more like established lovey-dovey couple not having a ring on. I'm like, I think, I wonder if people were looking at this being like yeah. trying to fit the pieces of who you are together now that we see no ring. Astute observation, KP. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Again, not that, not, that they, <laughs> not that it really matters, but yeah, they're, they're whole people. I mean, when, when Vanessa and I broke up, I lost like overnight 100,000 followers mm -hmm. be, because 
Well, I mean, listen, those 100,000 people were like, I don't know, I only care about the relationship. Yeah, I'm I here for a happy couple. I'm here for the mm -hmm. happy couple. That's it. And, okay. So, right. and you know, Michelle got her 20 messages. Like, <laughs> you know, there are people who are, in fact, only following you for your relationship. That kind of comes with the territory, I suppose. So, yeah, I mean, just one last note. It's just that Michelle is taking a break from teaching after feeling burnout from that and The Bachelorette, which okay. makes total sense. Um, Good for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people seem to be really judgy. Like, there's a, there's a, there's an, a, a niche group of Bachelor fans that loathe the idea of, of people who, like, use this platform to try to expand, you know, opportunities. It's just like if you were a teacher or an accountant that you are somehow a traitor oh. to yourself. It's like do what the Chiron says. Yeah. You were introduced to me as Michelle, no. like teacher. 26 oh or 28 gosh. or however she was, old she was. You did teacher. it to be famous. It's like, nah, you you were given- Life has changed. Life has changed. <laughs> you were, you've been given this incredible opportunity and you would be a fool not to like investigate and 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 see what else you what other passions you might have because you can be a teacher in so many ways mm -hmm. other than you know collecting a paycheck from the city of minneapolis yeah you can also go back to teaching whenever i'm like that's yeah. not that's not a i don't know if she's a teacher in minneapolis school district so i don't need a bachelor fan to <laughs> we'll get so many messages <laughs> do your homework <laughs> Listen, Father's Day is around the corner, and we all know people can be hard to shop for, especially our dads. So let's give them the, the gift of grooming. If you're listening and you're a lady, and I don't know how familiar you are with the, the under, but it's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of things moving around and things that are hard to trim, hard to trim. And the Manscaped, their, their equipment does wonders. Their, their uh, lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, whew, love that thing. Makes me feel like an artist, but also like, Evil can evil all at the same time. You know, you can be reckless and, and it still looks like art when you're done. It's a beautiful thing. They also have, just so you know, uh, Manscaped has amazing boxers. They have aluminum-free deodorant that I use. Aluminum, yeah, man, <laughs> I, I use Manscaped deodorant and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, aluminum-free. Truly, M Manscaped is doing some great things when it comes to the male grooming area. Uh, check out Manscaped for all their amazing assortment of products. Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Trimmer. Ball deodorant, again, amazing underwear. So get 20% off and plus free shipping with code VIALL at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code VIALL. Keep those balls clean and groomed. Peloton, you know them, you love and doing amazing things when it comes to fitness. And Peloton not only has amazing exercise bikes and treadmills, but they also have just an assortment of different workouts that you can use without equipment, uh, weight-free training that is super convenient for all sorts of people, especially if you're busy, on the go, traveling, and just not finding the time to like go to the gym, and maybe you can't afford a bike. Uh, the good news is if uh, you want to make an investment in their equipment, Peloton Bike Plus is now $500 less. It's their best price yet, and it includes free delivery and setup. Their equipment is phenomenal. Their classes are even better. Peloton instructors are highly trained fitness pros with who motivate you throughout every workout, whether you are a regular at the gym or someone who's just getting back into working out. Whatever your fitness level, Peloton instructors don't just teach you, they motivate you. Peloton has thousands of live on-demand classes, so they always keep it fresh. You can compete with friends around the world. You can, you can make friends through these classes. Work out to your favorite music, whether it's EDM, club, rap, doesn't matter. They have something for everyone. They have classes like boxing, bar, uh, yoga, uh, a sermon of all different types of classes. Peloton works with your schedule, uh, whether you have five minutes or an hour. Uh, plus, uh, there's never an awkward encounter in a locker room again. Thank God for that. Right now is the perfect time to try out Peloton. Like I said, the Peloton Bike Plus is now $500 less. It's the best price yet, including free delivery and setup. And there are more game-changing prices available on the original Peloton Bike and Peloton Tread. Visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. So Kelly Flanagan said that Peter was fun in games, didn't, quote, look up to him in the way she wants to look up to a spouse. Ouch. Cutting. She talks shit about Peter a lot. She said, um, I don't think there was one specific thing that led to the downfall for me and Peter. It was just a lot of little things. 
Peter and I had a lot of fun, but I don't know if I looked up to him in the way that I wanted to look up to my spouse. And then they were talking about like intelligence and, you know, pushing each other to grow and looking up to someone. And I think it was Mike who mentioned, well, you know, he's really brilliant and smart with aviation, but I think she was talking more, you know, day to day things because mm-hmm. when you get home after a how tough long day they work, date for a few months, I think more than that. It took her that long to figure this out. I mean, she's talked a lot of crap about Peter. Every time she goes on a, she seems to be very willing to share her, I guess, honest points on, on Peter, which I guess is fine. But there's also like a, you know, like, Hey, I have, you know, I've answered those questions. I wish him the best type of yeah. option as well. She definitely, I don't know. I don't love it. They were for, together for nearly nine months. And she wants to look up to him. I don't know. They have a weird way to describe. I agree. I'm like, is she saying respect? I'm like trying to figure out what look up to me yeah. means. Is it's it just, like, I think it's like, I think maybe she's alluding to like, I feel I feel like when you really respect and admire yeah. your partner, when you're like, God mm-hmm. damn, you are so freaking smart and poised. And like, I just like, I respect the shit out of you. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's more of like speaking to an absence of that as opposed to like the presence of something Couldn't that was really terrible. she have just terrible. said, you know, we just realize we're just not the right fit for each other. Like, why is the way, like, clearly, you know, like, Peter's just his own person. He's doing his thing. And for some person, he'll be, I, I'm sh- certain, a great partner. Like, say we all about Peter Weber. He's a nice, thoughtful guy who I've, I've, I've met far worse people than Peter, Peter Weber. He's really considerate and nice and Maybe he's in a fuckboy stage of life. I don't know. But it just seems like an unnecessary dig about someone you used to date. Yeah, it's a very vague dig, too. And I'm like, I think there's maybe something else there. Because I'm like, I I agree. If if what she's saying is true, I would probably just describe that as like, oh, I didn't see too much of a future. We're at different spots in our lives. But it is an odd little dig to be like, I can't look up to him. And then to speak about intelligence (laughs) seems like maybe... Peter's not dumb. Yeah. Totally. And it, yeah, and like like someone He's was, flying. I mean Yeah, like Mike Johnson was saying about like him flying. Like that's a very and intricate, difficult operation. It's also he, so high stakes. He's flying like the he's flying the planes of planes for United. You know, like he's flying like international travel to like South Africa. Like I feel like there's a level of aptitude is that is required oh, yeah. for for but she didn't discredit that. I think there's different levels of intelligence, like whether mm-hmm. it's like emotional or practical. I think Kelly should move on. Yeah. And when asked about it on an interview, she could easily just say, listen, I'm wishing nothing but the best. We're just not a good fit. And um, what a nice guy. I do think there's something to be said, though, for being honest about why relationships end. Mm. Because I think there's this level of like... In what capacity? I think... I've been thinking about this a lot just like with some of my friends who are like I've been making some friends who are like in their like 30s and 40s and like hearing from them like in their words why their friends like marriages ended or whatnot else it's like I feel like the intricacies of what actually contribute to a relationship ending and wanting to call it quits are something that I don't know that we always discuss with nuance. Oh I I mean to your friends and you know people that you might be able to like pull some information from sure but like to the not, public not on like public podcasts of which she's done multiple times and they've been broken up for over a year it just seems kind of like unnecessary yeah to like say something like i just didn't look up to him and like to kp's point it's like vague and also like but definitely shady it's shady, shady and sure. vague. <laughs> yeah she's trying to be shady and that's i mean that's fine but it's like all mm-hmm. right I don't know. It feels like Kelly's still trying to win the breakup and no one cares about the relationship anymore. Mm. Should we get into mom talk? Mom talk. Let's get it. Let's, uh, all right. We wrapping up bachelor riveting news. Mom talk. Um, who uh, Amanda set the stage since you're in and so that's fine. Set the stage. Um, I'm going to say a few buzzwords. <laughs> Swingers. Cheating, <laughs> soft swingers, soft swinging. Mormon. Uh, Mormon. Mormon, mom talk, friends. So as kind of Nick alluded to in the intro, this is uh, something that has become a sensation on the internet that began with one woman, Taylor, announcing her divorce from her husband. Um, in announcing this divorce, 
the story that we were fed as the general public was that they had an arrangement where they and certain friends, she didn't name names, but everybody sort of like patched together from internet, but not that some, it was some other prominent Mormon moms from mom talk, um, had a practice of having parties where they would get drunk, but they, but they say it was completely consensual. And then a soft swing and hook up with either each other's husbands or each other. Yeah. However, there was a policy to quote, not go all the way between Taylor and her husband that she violated. And so was it all the way? I, I thought the policy was they just couldn't do other stuff n without like the approval and, and not being not, in the same room, in, like in the presence. Yeah. Or like in the same part at the same party. But like not it was, not it was both. There was yeah. both of those stipulations. It was they had to be together. And it couldn't go all the way for sex. So it was a two-part gotcha. kind of deal between them. Right? Okay. Now, I, like I said, I talked to Taylor. So I quickly reached out and thought, this is mm -hmm. Mormons, religion, sex, swinging. This is perfect yeah. for our podcast. So there's something that thought to myself, she was, she was quick to respond and quick to say, I want to come on. And then I was just like, you know, I need to vet this out a little mm -hmm. bit before... Uh, and I saw someone suggest that it might be for attention or for clout and that, so, and then since then that, that is, that has been a speculation by many that, it, and I think it's something that's still being speculated that it's still for clout. So we jumped on the phone with Taylor, Shanti and myself, and right off the bat, she was very nice. And right off the bat, she I was like, I'll be honest, I, I'm not familiar with who you were until this. Like, can you just bring me up to speed? And she talked about how most of her stuff she puts on TikTok, she said, is satirical. And I was like, well, what is so? She goes, but this is real. Like, okay. And like, what do you mean by satirical? And apparently she, there was a moment in time where some of her followers thought she was a 50-some-year-old woman. She leaned into that, right? She, she wanted that. Exactly. Yeah. And, like, she she, she was, like, and when talking about it on a podcast, was like, yeah, it was just, like, a bit I thought was so funny that people kept believing it. But she kept But she, she kept it. She started it. She started yeah. it and, like, went with it. And I was like, okay. So, but then she's like, she's like, unfortunately, this is real. And she sounded really sad about it. She's like, I am getting a divorce with my husband. I'm like, okay. And and then I asked her, like, well, so what what's going on here? And she said essentially what you guys all said is that she said that uh, it was a group of friends, like there were like three or four couples, and I three couples, and thank you, Shanti. <laughs> and I asked how if is there any other couple that's an influencer, part of this mom talk. She said one other couple. Oh, that haven't been on the TikToks. There were six oh, people included, it. three couples. Her and her husband were one of the couples. Mm -hmm. And one of the other couples was, were influencers. Okay. And she, yeah, so she, and she she was like, yeah, I did this shit. I, she sounded sad. She did. She sounded sad like this was, come, like she was getting divorced. But she acknowledged that she did this and that she was wrong. Uh, she seemed a little frustrated with the situation. Assuming it's all true, she said, I did this. I definitely broke these rules. Yeah. But it was kind of like we all played with fire kind of thing. And now, you know, but I guess I, I did this shit and now I'm getting divorced. And, and so I was like, all right, well, are you down to... And, I was like, are you down to come in and talk about it? Because my whole thought was like, maybe she'll come on and we'll talk about it. I think there's a lot of fascination with the Mormon religion. Mm -hmm. I asked her like, how, how Mormon are you? Like, I'm, like I was raised Catholic. I haven't gone to church in a few years. And she, she seemed to be that type of Mormon where she's like, she said she went to church on Easter and Christmas. Okay. She said she's still like, you know, thought like she got some sense of community from it, but she didn't seem to be a uh, very... Someone whose like religiosity showed up yeah, very she regularly. Obviously, was the, she acknowledged that they were drinking a lot. Like that's one thing she emphasized is that these parties they were just getting hammered. Yeah, that's. I mean, what I was gonna say is like for sure she was playing with fire, and I do empathize too. But because I'm like, if you're plastered, and the rule is like you can't go all the way, I'm like, 
that is just a bit difficult to just be like, now we have these regular dry hump parties or something <laughs> where yeah. I'm just like, you're going to eventually get to the point where that is gets a little messy or gets a little blurred or something. Uh, and she yeah. said how they, she, she acknowledged that she started developing feelings mm. for one of these other people. And then, um, so we left and I was like, all right, well, and then I was like, well, do you think you're, your, would your, like, cause I'm like in a perfect world, I'd love your husband to come on too. Incredible. I'd love to get a, both sides of the story because she also made it seem like she would, was still like, and pretty decent communication. Mm -hmm. Like it was more like the way she described it was he was divorcing her out of a matter of principle. It was like, we had a rule, you broke a rule. And I said, if you break this rule, we're gonna get divorced. You broke the rule and now you're forcing my hand. But the way she was describing it, and again, this is this one person's story and keep in mind this person pretended to be a 50 year old person in the past, so who knows, <laughs> but she she made it seem like no one wanted to get divorced, but they broke a rule. So I was like, well, why don't you both come on and let's talk about it. And she's like, I'll ask them. And then I was like, okay. And we got off the phone. And then I was like, well, thanks for chatting with us. Uh, I hope you can make it. And I was like, I'm actually, I, was, I gave her the soft close, which was mm -hmm. the presumptive close. Look forward to having you on because, right. and then she wrote back, hope we can make it work. And I, immediately that was a shift from, I can fly out to LA. Uh, and I was like, okay. And quickly you could tell she was ge either getting cold feet. And then, and then she mentioned how like, uh, you know, and not surprisingly, she's like, it was involving, a, you know, it's, it's getting messy. And then she claimed that she was served a cease and desist order um, as, of, as recently as yesterday to Shanti. Oh, she, she, interesting. Which, and then now there's all these rumors that it's definitely fake. Allie reached out to two of the other more prominent uh, Mormon mothers. One of them got back to us um, and also very nice. We reached out to a Miranda and we reached out to Camille. Mm -hmm. Miranda wrote back. She said she'll have to speak to her manager. Oh. But uh, thanked, thanked me, uh, thanked us, thanked us for the inquiry. And then, and then wrote back a couple hours later, after further consideration, she is going to decline, uh, but hopes to uh, come back on the podcast in under more positive uh, situation. I feel like one of these other two women might be one of the other couples. I don't know. That's a speculation. Yeah. I have no... Um, so from what I was reading online, though, because they had this kind of understanding but couldn't go all the way, it just like adds to the complexity of it because yeah. it's not like Taylor one day decided to go have an affair with her friend's mm -hmm. husband. From what I was reading online, the rumors are that Taylor, you know, went all the way with Victoria's husband but that Victoria, Victoria had done stuff with Taylor's husband. So it was kind of a flip-flop. Taylor just took it one step too far. So it, it's like, well, it's just so complex. Seems and subjective it's like totally, in the rules. Yeah. yeah. So here's my big question is, like, I feel like non-traditional relationships are on the rise. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious as to, like, what do we think about that? And I, I feel like there's going to be, I think part of the fascination is one, it's, there's always fascinating, it's always fascinating because it's different. Yeah. But two, I think there's also a curiosity a lot of people have. It's kind of like, oh, and then it's like, tell me more. Yeah. Well, tell, well, tell me more because. Like, yeah, societally, we've only just gotten to a point where the instant reaction is an ew, sin. True. <laughs> right? When it comes to like any kind of like sexual practice that isn't like yeah. monogamous. Well, Think about the quick oral history of marriage. And this is very quick, but like <laughs> it used to be women were basically traded as objects mm -hmm. between families and it was, pro they were property. They were property. And like some of the, it's crazy. Some of the initial marriage documents of the country, it's like a man has the right to correct a woman in whatever like means he sees fits. Mm -hmm. Like it was all. Truly bizarre. I think Mormon has more of a poly marriage well, scenario, that, right? There is that element too. Yeah. That's also a whole nother It makes wrinkle. me think that's why this like maybe was brought up 
or like happened is because like I think that you're allowed to have multiple wives in like extreme Mormonism, but it seems like they were kind of casual Mormons. It seems like Taylor, at least, I can't yeah. speak for the other people that she identified to us as a far more casual right. Mormon. Like, but I, d- I, I don't know the role. I, I'm really iffy on if I, mean, I, I just there's obviously the 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 reality TV show that exists. Oh yeah, sister wives, sister, sister wives. wives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're Mormon, but yep. I feel like that's more of a niche group of Mormons. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, on Wikipedia it says today uh, various denominations of fundamentalist sure. Mormon, Mormonism practice polygamy. Yeah, sure. but like that's so, polygamy is definitely different than swinging. Yeah, and yes. soft swinging. and swapping <laughs> and soft swinging. Yeah, any type of swapping. So while both non traditional practices yeah. completely different, and I think it was said that the women would sometimes also hook up. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the women hooked up too. There was some. Okay, I think so. That was out there. Yeah. Okay, some exploitation, LGBTQ Ex- mm-hmm. involvement, and in, right? No. Do you think this is going to lead to more soft swinging? Is a soft a soft swinging revolution? Yeah. <laughs> I just like imagine a couple in bed, like sort of like neither one being the one who wants to say totally. it, being like, "So, did you see that a uh, Mormon couple soft swinging <laughs> like yeah. crazy, right?" And Unless <laughs> is, is, is soft swinging sh- anything but sex? Because like, what about oral? Because I feel like mm. I got the impression oral was going on. Me too. I think it's anything but all the way, and all the way seems like sex. Yeah, yeah. But like, I, I if know. you're if you're performing oral, I mean, you might as well just go yeah. all the way, right? Right? Yeah. I yeah, because I feel like now that I think of it, I'm like. I think it would maybe if you were going to draw boundaries, maybe it would make sense to regulate orgasms. How do you do that? <laughs> like, if you have an accidental one, you're yeah. in trouble. Oh, I think that doesn't work. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I just mean like, <laughs> like not within the soft swapping. I, I like, I don't know. I, no judgment <laughs> to however people want to do this, but like, I, I think maybe to me it would make more sense to distinguish between like fooling around and, but not to the point of like, people coming i mean you could what you put a put a married man who's maybe like hasn't hooked up with his wife in years and and put him in front of you know anyone he's attracted to it might not take much so yeah. i feel like that's a very also a bit like boundary to enforce yeah then i'm also like what are you doing it for you might <laughs> well, i mean i feel like there's yeah but i don't know so like we've gone from the old-fashioned like wet marriage being a form of property exchange right we evolved in like the early 1900s mid like 1950s where that wasn't happening but like basically you got married fresh out of high school or college Mm -hmm. to the first person you liked or loved in your early 20s had a couple kids and then you know marriage at that point people just kind of drank themselves into a coma (laughs) uh moms would stay at home dads would go to the the rotary clubs they kind of it was it became more of like a partnership. They hated each other. Eventually, slept in separate bedrooms and then died. Like that. That used to be marriage. Good old days. The good old days. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, divorce became more prevalent. So then people, you know, now we can get divorced. Okay, now we can get divorced. And marriage just has evolved. And now with dating being what it is, and the world's become smaller and more accessible through all this technology. Now meet anyone can meet anyone anywhere at any time. Temptation has never been more rampant than ever before. And I just feel like to make marriage work, a lot of people are going to start resorting to these non-traditional forms of relationships because it's just like, would you rather have me lie to you or, you know, and I'm, it's, I feel like this is just the beginning of what is going to be uh, more heavily considered and talked about. But I think this is an exact reason not to. Like we've seen now how this plays out with like boundaries uh, when they get broken are devastating still. And whether that boundary is, you know, you're not allowed to look at anyone else or if it's this soft swinging thing, I think in general boundaries are always going to get pushed a bit and that's gonna i don't know i'm like i don't think this is a success story (laughs) no it's it's definitely not but i think you make a good point and like we were talked about earlier and i maybe we should have brought in like a 
an expert swinger or someone yeah. who's already participating successfully in these types of relationships. But it it does seem rather difficult to enforce like this soft swinging yeah. thing because it's like once you crack the seal, yep. it's like trying to eat a soup dumpling, you know, like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just have to put the whole thing in your mouth. <laughs> You can't take a bite of a soup dumpling. It's just like the soup's going to get everywhere. Uh-huh. It's just going to be a mess. You know? Amazing metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> it really worked. But yeah, cuz like, yeah. oh, no, you can you can't look, you can't kiss, what you can you can't no tongue. Right. Oh, no, o- only oral, well, just touching, like one finger, two fingers, mm-hmm. sex, only sex for 2 seconds, no orgasm, like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like it's just yeah. either you're going to allow yourself to be tempted and explore having a connection with anyone else but your husband or wife or you just don't. Yeah. Right. I also think sometimes setting boundaries can make the other side look even more tempting. I'm like, if you're just like, okay, and now you can like not go all the way, then it's like kind of all you want to do is go all the way now. The Bachelor is a show that is designed on building relationships through withholding love. Uh. That's how that's how they do it. They introduce you to someone and then they pull you away. Mm -hmm. They're always pulling you away. It's the pulling away that like, and then you don't get to hang out with the person that you had a momentary flickle of a connection, a fickle or whatever the Uh word I want. Flicker? Flicker, thank you, (laughs) of a connection with. And then you- Put it on a pedestal. Put it on a pedestal and you think about it for three days while you watch other people get to spend time with that same person. That's how the show works mm. and they and and that's kind of what this soft swinging is is it's just a little taste yep but then we're going to pull it away from you and know what you get to do then to your point kp you get to long for it, you get to mm-hmm. fantasize you get to wonder about it and now when you're having sex with your husband and wife what do you think you're thinking about i right just go ahead and do it yep. just have sex with them and get it out of your system i i, I would be yeah because right? like how many times have we had sex with people and then thought I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Got, yeah. All right. Now I know. Yep. You know how many? <laughs> yep. Did you know there's also a bachelor connection in this story? I just found out today. How so? The, there is a girl in this group, Camille Monday, last name Monday. Oh, who we, yeah. We, okay. She did not respond to us. Camille Monday married to, I don't know, let's call him Mr. Monday. Can't remember his first name. His little brother is Joe Monday. Joe Monday is married to person... That came out of a race car on Ari's season. There was a lot of people we don't remember, of but course. she was on the show. She was on the show, so she's. I mean, Bachelor Nation has a pretty strong, prominent Mormon connection. They love sure. Bachelor. the The casting people and the and the Bachelor love love casting, uh, as they describe as fallen Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because they're ready to let loose. They're kind of on their rumspringa. Yeah, <laughs> I, it, I think there's a level of rebelliousness yeah. uh, that they have uh, is, I think, the perception. I don't know how true that is, but they there's been a lot of uh, former m- m- Mormons uh, on the on the Bachelor. So that 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 connection yeah. doesn't surprise me. That's something I really appreciate about like LA in particular, but like any cities is that like people come from like such different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And I think whenever I meet someone and they like sometimes someone will casually mention me like, oh yeah, I was in a super like religious household. I never celebrated my birthday until I was like 21. Right. Stuff like that. And it's it's really fascinating how you can have this like all encompassing religious experience only to then kind of like integrate into more like mainstream yeah, yeah. Communities. Oh, good point, Shanti. Another thing Taylor told us is that this all started, according to Taylor, to satisfy like her husband's sexual desires after they had two kids. It kind of seemed like she was blaming him. Or just really sad about it. Like she was trying to like appease the mm. husband's sexual desire after having two kids. And I think she admits she made a mistake, but was also just super sad because she was like, well, I was trying to make sure that the husband's got the sex they needed. She still effed up, right? But sad. Mm. Well, there was also uh, an element of this was like people were talking about them sleeping in separate beds. And it wasn't like, and she was like, it's not indicative of any like divorce. We weren't like separate or anything. It was just for like convenience of sleeping. Mm -hmm. But it does kind of like add a little bit of context of maybe like there is a lack of like sexual happiness in yeah. this relationship mm-hmm. at a given time so, that maybe makes them more willing to experiment. Do we believe this Taylor? Do we believe Taylor? 
because she did go on a podcast like a month ago and like loosely talk about this whole situation before it became a scandal. And then she's done TikToks referring to like whether she believes in having more of an open marriage. I was very not because I think like when you build your platform around clickbait e things like I'm 50 or like, you know, you know, stirring the pot just to get views. I think when that's your reputation, I want to be like, whoa, what an ultimate way to stir the pot is to like create this big divorce swinging drama. But it does seem like a lot of them are like pretty broken up about this. And like it has extended beyond what seems like a clickbait ploy. And like many of them are like, I don't want to talk about it. So maybe I do. Well, the thing is, well, there's an explanation potentially for that Mm -hmm. because you have all the, there's like a lot, there's like a handful of these moms, yeah. right? It's not just two or three. There's like a group. And I think, you know, with this, this, these types of rumors, there's always a lot of assumptions made. So I'm guessing that every mom in this group was asked or even accused of being part of this group. I think the mm-hmm. first assumption was like this, this giant, like everyone who's part of this mom talk is part of the swinger group. Yeah. And so there's probably a lot of, wanting to distance themselves from this, right? So there could have just been that. But also like, yeah, she's like, she definitely has done some satirical things, but isn't this the last straw? Like if it yeah. is a lie? This is like- Yeah, come on. If, if and you, there are kids, they have kids. Yeah, and it's I'm just, like, this seems It seems a much. little too much yeah. to, like where you go from, no one's gonna believe you anymore. Right. Yeah. It's I, one thing that like, she's clearly not 50. Yeah. So, like, it was like, okay, you know, you're trying to prove the gullible, but, like, this is a very believable story. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. Like, Mormons who are, like, at least uh, the perception uh, of people who aren't Mormon for Mormons is a lot of shame around mm-hmm. sex and a lot of pressure to get married very young and start mm-hmm. a family, maybe before you would otherwise want to, and then get to your, like, mid to late 20s and realize maybe they're, you've lost that love and feeling with right. your partner and you have a couple kids and then you start ex- then you you pull away from the church and you start exploring more non-traditional forms mm-hmm. of of sex in relationships. Yeah. Like it's a very believable situation. Yeah. But I also think it's the kind of thing where like I think there's a lot of people who are probably very upset with this portrayal because like there's a oh, lot yeah. of people who practice polyamory in a way that's super respectful, that's super consensual, that respects partners' boundaries. And I think this idea of like, oh, one thing leads to another. Like if you are going to engage in an open relationship, of course you're going to cheat. Like mm-hmm. I think that's something that for a lot of people who are in open relationships or are, are polyamorous, they're sort of like, excuse me, like this is not my experience. I guess, but I, I feel like... No one, she she certainly didn't describe herself to us as some sort of like expert in this. Yep. It definitely came across as exploratory and like experimental. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she, you know, when we talked to her, she certainly acknowledged that like maybe they got it wrong, so to speak. And I think this whole, all these non-traditional non-tra- forms of like relationships, I think are in fact like just by definition experimental. I don't yeah. know if there's a right or a wrong way for people. I just think if people. you lie about it, if you lie about it and... Like one of the part aspects of your lie is like, and I cheated, be- and we were swinging. Like I think, mm-hmm. like then it's kind of like, yeah. Someone commented, or a few people did commented that like they're doing this to get a reality to show, to like go for the big win. Here would be they get their own reality show. This group, and that was just like speculation in the comment section. But I was like, that's interesting to me. Is like maybe they're keeping it kind of vague, not going on podcast, keeping it like whatever so that they can get the big fish of right, their own Here we are perpetuating the, yeah. the story. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's possible, but like, so wait, so it's, you're saying that the rumor is it's true. The story's true. Mm-hmm. And now they're pulling back from, say, coming on a hit podcast to talk <laughs> about it and flying to LA, but because they're going for the reality TV show? I think... Even the true or not true, like, almost doesn't matter. But what I've heard is, not what I've heard, what I've read from some people in the comment section is they want to go for the reality TV show. That would be the big money, right? Yeah, I've also heard, like, interest in, like, being on Real Housewives, Salt Lake City. So it's, like, sure, sure. there's definitely some, like, clout chasing accusations. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think they're probably all guilty of clout chasing, but there's a difference between clout chasing and and this story. 
And even if, and I think if she made up the story, I think that would not serve her well to getting a reality TV show. Because anyone can make up any lie about anything, yep. but if there's nothing there, and if your whole platform, again, this, this has created so much noise. Yep. Is it possible she thought this would be right in the ballpark of pretending she's 50? Maybe. She didn't, she doesn't sound stupid to me. She sounds pretty clever. And you would think, I, you know, faking a divorce and yeah. involving other families with kids that are involved, I just, I don't know. It just seems a little too much yep. for a lie. Because I, if it is a lie, she's she's done. Yes. And I think if it was trying to really get a reality show or whatever, names would be named, right? Whoever else wants to be on this big reality show would also be named and it would be this whole Real Housewife D type drama back and forth videos, back and forth videos. Yeah. But it seems like there's just a lot of regret from everyone else involved and from her. So I don't think that ploy, if it is that, is the right way or like working. Yeah. I I mean, this is this fan speculation. Yeah. I don't, yeah, that's not a, the way to go about getting a reality TV yeah. show. The way to do it would have been like to just, like you said, come forward, say, hey, we do this yeah. thing and it's weird and different yeah. and judge all you want, but this is who we are. Yep. Final thoughts on mom talk. I think it happened. I you think, think it happened? Yeah. I think it's beyond clickbait. I think she's wants to be in the limelight, but I think she is sorry. I think there's a chance that there was one party where she got kind of drunk and made out with her friends, and she's exaggerating. That's my <gasps> guess, based off no evidence. But she's getting divorced. I think that was. I think there were other marital problems, and I think instead of like addressing the unglamorous, like we are not willing to make sacrifices in the way that you need to make sacrifices for your partner, or whatever other like very real things contribute to a relationship falling apart, I think it's a lot easier to find something very tangible and very exciting that has a lot of shock value, even though it's still devastating. If it's true, at least it's like this isolated, crazy incident as opposed to like on a daily basis, the person I'm spending all of my time with no longer wants to move through mm. life with me. Do you think all these influencers that, that for mom, on Mom Talk, like most of us have never heard of it until this thing. So no matter what, they'll always forever be thought of as Mormon swingers. The Mormon swingers. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Which sounds like a really fun like dance group. The Mormon swingers. <laughs> you know? Mormon swingers, yeah. <laughs> Not gonna be good for the brand deals. I don't know if like yeah. uh there's yeah. always Maybe a Adam shady and Eve. brand. Yeah, to like a sex toy <laughs> brand. <laughs> and again, we don't we don't shame any uh, alternative lifestyles on this show, yeah. you know, to each their own. Uh and I do think it's gonna be more and more commonplace as as society evolves and uh dating apps continue to make it so easy to meet anyone anywhere yeah at any time we are in deliberation with the johnny depp and amber her trial thank god finally it's coming to an end have you followed we've we've been following it closely i think it's this. hard not to yeah there's been so many tiktoks and stuff so i've seen i feel like i've been following ish so two two questions I just want to pose to everyone. Uh, what do we think is going to happen and how would you v vote? Is it vote? Del what would, I what would you decide? <laughs> del del yeah. Deliver? It's a verdict. What, what would you verdict? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. What would your verdict be? What verdict yeah. would you deliver? W yeah, if, uh, if you were a member of the jury. And now okay. one thing, uh, Natalie pointed out to me is that in the closing arguments it seemed like camille specified that this case is about physical abuse right because last week we had delora on who who uh gave us some legal counsel oh nice and uh, very helpful and she articulated why this case would is so on paper hard for johnny to win which is because this isn't about whether amber abused johnny or not this is about whether johnny abused amber right. So all they really have to approve, uh, all they have to prove, is that Johnny abused Amber just once. Yeah. All the jury has to think, despite all that stuff out there, is that well, I still think he abused her once. But it's my understanding in the closing arguments that Camille specified, and I don't know if this is actually true or how the jury is going to interpret it, that this is about physical abuse, mm -hmm. not any other type of abuse. Now I don't know if people 
there might be people in the jury who don't make that distinction. Mm -hmm. They might just say abuse is abuse, which I think a lot of people would argue would be fair. That said, uh, I, I wonder what is going to, how the jury is going to respond. Here's how I see it. And then I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, Amber was on the stand uh, last week. And like, we don't really know what happened uh, between Johnny and Amber. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence, I feel like. But it, it seems pretty clear at this point, Amber has lied multiple times on the stand. She got caught lying about, on, on her second time up, she, out her, she basically, she's just, like, she's been on the stand multiple times. So like, and she's talked out of both sides of her mouth. So like, in the beginning of the trial, it was, I didn't write this op-ed about Johnny. I just wrote it about like a grand, like a more of a high level thing. Mm -hmm. And then when she was being cross-examined by Camille, uh, and basically she's getting called out for some of these, uh, well, as Camille suggested, lies, mm -hmm. Amber, her defense of, of saying why everyone was lying but her was to say, well, people do crazy things for powerful men. And that was her defense. And then she went on to say, and that's why I wrote that op-ed op -ed about John. That's why I wrote about Johnny. So like she acknowledged that. So that, that, that was a lie. She, she lied about, you know, one time she would never take MDNA, MDMA with Johnny. Another time she talked about how she did MDMA once with Johnny. And then there's the photograph of claiming it to be two separate photos, which is like, it's clearly not. It's the same photo because every little one of her like fragmented hairs are the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. And that's just like, there's no hairspray in the world that's that strong. And it's, so she's lied multiple times and she's, the way I see on the stand, the way she's li like, she lied about like not seeing the, the, the manager from Hicksville. She's like, yeah, I don't know. I didn't know. I've never seen him in my life. Mm -hmm. It's so matter of fact. And like, I know we use the word, I, I'm very critical about how people use the word gaslighting because it's wildly misused. But when when I'm listening to her talk, it feels like she's trying to gaslight, I guess, me or the audience because it's just like, because gaslighting is when you're like truly trying to min change someone's perspective of reality. Yeah. So like you catch your like partner cheating, you're you're looking right at them and they're like, yeah, no, I'm I'm not cheating on you. It's, it's that they're just, just, they have no problem stating what everyone knows is true and they're just like, no. Mm -hmm. Just lying through their teeth with like, and they and it looks like they believe their lie. So we've seen her lie and I'm just, and I feel like the way people respond to liars, especially now, it's just like, we hate liars more than anyone, I think. Right. When people like portray themselves to be one way and then we realize them to be something else. And it makes me wonder, I feel like the jury, if they think she's lying, they might read Johnny's text and say that these are disgusting text, but we've all put ourselves, if, if you think she's lying about so many things, I feel like some, like I think it wouldn't it be unlikely for the jury to give her, give Johnny a a pass on some of these texts, despite them being pretty gross and, and wrong. But the, their argument is, what would you do if you were being essentially blackmailed? If you were being lied about, if you were being accused of these, horrendous things would you not want to vent your frustrations to your friends via text and i feel like are all these texts that he sent to friends are, are any of these to to I her just, i don't know that it's fair to call that venting oh yeah it's threats they're weird i mean i don't know like i vent to my friends all the time and i don't talk about fucking someone's corpse I, again i wouldn't write that <laughs> i think it's gross but i'm just wondering if you're a jury member and if you if you got if you were being lied about, if you if you got accused of if you believe that she's lying, right? Again, because this is not about whether she abused him, because that's not ha that has nothing to do with the verdict, but it has been heavily discussed in this yeah. case. And so, if you think that she has been lying about these things, and now you're here, and now okay, we think Amber's lying, but now we have to decide what do we make of these texts. And that's the big question. But if you think she's lying. And you think that she came up with this whole campaign and you think she's lied about these photos and you think she's lied about all these things, you wouldn't like be pushed to say some horrendous things that you might say, I don't know, man, I was just like, you know, again, we know he's 
like texting your friends horrible things, despite how horrible they are, are not abuse, right? But I guess it's it's all setting these people up to be total villains to get the point, right? Is to like, yeah, like set Amber up as a liar to the jury. It doesn't matter, whatever, whatever. We just want to say she's a liar so that the jury votes our way is what I'm sure Camille wants. Sure, yeah. And then we just want Johnny to look, you know, like an absolute Monster. violent man so that we get what we want. Yeah. So I think it's like tricky to say, to go back to the facts. The legal facts are like, doesn't matter who's a liar, who's a this, who's a this. It's did Johnny hit Amber? But I, so I agree with you. I think the jury is going to, I think they are going to say that he didn't. Well, there hasn't been any evidence to suggest that he has other than her testimony. Pictures. Her pictures of like bruises and stuff. But yeah, that's yeah, its oh, own yeah. thing. Yeah. So uh, the only, you're right, the only evidence we have are pictures that she has provided that shows she has bruises, but there's been a lot of evidence to contradict yep. or qu at least question the authenticity of that evidence. Yep. And then other, so that's, that's all you have to go on. And it's still a big if though. What would you, what, you, what would your verdict be? I find my, I, I was so, I watched her cross-examination last Friday and I was, I was, I really, I've been really trying to hold back mm -hmm. judgment and really, because it's so much fandom out there and, and so much like instant reactions, but like watching her on the stand and what to me seemed like just absolutely lying through her teeth mm -hmm. and having no problem doing it, I think is this like a scary, icky feeling i got and and i think it was if someone's that if someone's so capable of lying about those things that, that I, that's what i know right mm -hmm. and so i would i would i would lean towards uh leaning towards johnny's side after especially at, at, for me her last cross-examination i thought was very damning for her in my eyes I'm going to go team Amber. I mean, not strong. I don't want to, <laughs> but I do think. As a jury. Yes, as yeah. a jury. I think that, yeah, the, if we're trying to prove that this man even one time was violent, I think of the bevy of pictures, the weird violent text speak, the this and this and this, I don't have a lot of issues being like, yeah, I think this is a violent uh, man. And I do think that like, one of these pictures has got to be, to me, the direct uh, result of some violence from him. I think I'd go, yeah, I'd go yes. Yeah, I'm in this a similar boat where I think I would be cur very curious to like hear the judge remind me and break down exactly what is the burden of proof on this case. Mm -hmm. Because I think the, the fact that the burden of proof is on Johnny works in his disadvantage because obviously it's like a, a huge shit show. They both are guilty of atrocious things. I think Amber Heard is like really I I'm like really disgusted with a lot of her like behavior and the way like she has been co-opting certain energy and movements etc but that being said like yeah i don't i think in terms of like all the things that like delara break broke down like there's just so many different things that all need to fall into place for right. it to be defamation that i don't think you can concretely say it was not yeah no i definitely can't concretely say it was it or was like not. it was defamation right to your point is that what they have to do do you have to say i definitely know he didn't Otherwise, Amber wins because, yeah, then you're you're right. Yeah. Well, because he's the plaintiff. So he's How the one we... who's being like, she defamed me. So it needs to be. And in order for it to be considered defamation, it needs to meet those strict standards that we broke down last if, week. If his team has to prove without a doubt he definitely did not abuse her in any ways, right. then I don't see how he wins. I agreed. And also that the article was about him, which obviously we all know it was. But then also that that article specifically is the reason that he faced repercussions from like why he was like dropped from all of his various professional yeah. endeavors. Like there's just like a lot of things that need to line up perfectly. I think there's a chance the jury won't think that way yeah. when deciding and they will see her the lot. They'll they'll just say she's the liar. She lied. And they will empathize with his situation enough 
that I think that's his chance of winning is them to basically yeah. not follow the rules because I right. feel like by the letter of the law, it's if we're if we're understanding it correctly, I don't see how he has a chance to win because no one can say no one's going to bet their life on the fact that he never did anything. Right. I agree. But sometimes, yeah, juries just start going on vibes of like, yeah, yeah I just want to reward this person that was the wor the less worse one. Or, yeah. Or punish the. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, again, if you watch Amber and like. That type of lying, I think, is it's it's scary. It's scary that people are are so good or so willing to lie. It's it's a mess, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. I hope it's soon. Yeah, yeah, please end this. I think it will be. People are just thinking it'll go quick. All right, it's time for texting office hours. Let's uh, bring on our caller. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name? I'm Layla. Hi, Layla. Um, and I'm 25 years old. Great. Um, I um, need help drafting a text to um, a first hinge date that I went on, but we've been on two dates total. I've been texting him like here and there, like after the dates and before the dates. But after the dates, he'll always say like, we should do it again sometime. Like had a great time. And I'm like, yeah, me too. After the first one never really heard from him. He said that he had like a busy week. And finally, I just like went out there and texted him. And I was like, Hey, I'm free. Like, if you want to get a drink again. And he was like, yes. And then he kind of said the same thing after the second date, he was like, had such a great night with you would love to do it again. So I texted him back and I was like, yes, like when you're free, let me know. So then we could plan something. And he was like, sounds good. And then we just had like some small talk. And then that was kind of the, the end of it. And I have a feeling like, after, like this is the second time he's done that. So I'm like, do I text him again when I want to go on another date? Like, I know he's in, he has like a trip this week. So like, I know like last week and this week, I wasn't going to be hearing from him, but I have a feeling like when he gets back, he won't be texting me you know because Why? like it's already happened it's already happened twice like after the first date he was like oh I'm busy this week but like would love to like touch base and like do like hang out the following week but then he never reached out the following week so you made so the then, second date happen I made the second date happen because he after the first date he was like I would love to do it again like let's like go again but I have a busy week so like let's touch base the following week so we could plan something. And I was like, totally like, let's do that. And then he never reached out. So then I was like, okay, am I supposed to reach out? Because he said like, let's touch base, you know? So then that's why I reached out because it's, yeah, it was like, he, 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 he was incredibly vague. So. Mm -hmm. Right. So then that's why the second time when he said after the second date and he was like, had a great time, like would love to do it again. I was like, okay, when you're free, you text me. You said that? Yeah, I said, um, Are you having the I, I know you have a busy next couple of weeks. So text me when you're free and we can plan something. Right. Mm -hmm. So just to recap, you met him on Hinge. You had a nice date. He was he had fun, so he says. Gave a yeah. very vague um, you know, let's hang out again sometime. Yeah. And then you followed up with him. Good for you. You wanted good Thank great. you. Amazing. Yeah. You had a nice yeah. second date. Mm -hmm. About the same as the first. Once yeah, again, longer. With, yeah. Once again, to the vagueness. When he yeah. when he's in person with you, he's like in it. He's not yeah. like being vague and weird and distracted. No, like I like after the first date, I was like, wow, like he's amazing. And then after the second date, we were like on the date for like eight hours, and he was the one that was like, let's go to this bar, like let's go here. I just think everyone's a fuck boy until they meet <laughs> someone they don't want to be a fuck boy for. Yeah. Um. Yep. And I, I don't include just men. I think everyone. Yep. Like dating apps. I think everyone, if you're part of hookup culture, you're out there, you're dating, just assume everyone's a fuck yeah. boy until right. they want to stop being a fuck boy for you. It also brings out mm -hmm. the worst in people. Online dating is just like, yeah, I don't, I don't blame him for sending that picture because I think if somebody cancels, I could see somebody else yeah. being like, great, well, you're done. One strike, you're out yeah. type thing. So right. I'm like- it's online dating is so tough. So yeah, great. And, and to KP's point, <laughs> everyone's like, you know, sometimes they have these like the way people protect themselves yep. for other people having so many options is having these very like rigid 
rules, which mm-hmm. I guess it's good to have these boundaries and non-negotiables, but in a world where you don't know these people, like I think everyone has to be a little um, understanding, understanding yeah. and and flexible at first and at least get to know people before they start, you know, yep. writing yeah. people off. All right, let's let's dramatic read this. On a separate note, uh, I would love to go out again sometime. Uh, this week, weekend isn't great for me, but I'm free next week if you're up for it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little tee hee hee emoji. That actually works better for me too. Perfect, sounds good. Well, I hope you have a great week slash weekend. He just likes to get it all <laughs> in one. Uh, let's catch up sometime next week to see uh, when you link up. A uh, smiley emoji face, and you hearted that. Love that. I hope you have a great week, too, and happy almost Cinco de Drinco, lol. Yeah, you too. Going to be a comedy show tomorrow in Venice. May may take uh, your recommendation and end up at Winston House, lol. You Ooh. guys are just really laughing. There's you guys laugh. are making each other <laughs> laugh like crazy. OMG, yeah, you'll have to tell me what you think. Party emoji. Okay. And then that was... That was Wednesday, May 4th, and now we're fast forwarding to Monday, May 16th. Uh, how old is this guy? He's 28, and oh, I'm 25. Okay. And yeah. what happened between the 4th and the 16th? Nothing. Like, we, I think we texted like that. Um, the 4th, we texted a lot. Oh, yeah, not really. No. Yeah, were that there, was... Were there no nothing. conversations? No conversation. And were you just kind of hoping he would reach out and, like, follow through on linking up? that following yeah week. yeah that's why I waited until like the following week because I was like oh like Monday he won't reach out like I'm sure like he'll reach out like Tuesday or Wednesday and then he didn't and then I was like okay maybe Thursday and he's hoping for a weekend but then he didn't and then I was like okay I'm not gonna reach out like f that and then um, some of my friends were like just reach out like who cares and then I was like okay like I'll reach out like I'll see and then he clearly like after I reached out it seemed like he wanted you know what I mean like he was Talk, like texting me and like planning the next one. So I don't know. Maybe he just sucks at texting. But then again, I don't. No, he just has other things going on. Uh, yeah. And then, all right. So then you pick it back up on the 16th. Hey, how was your weekend? I'm around this week if you want to grab drinks again. Hey there. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> he wants you to know he's in a good mood. Yeah. So, no, I hate that uh, smiley face that he uses. <laughs> It's awful. It's it's a bad one. No cheeks. Dead eyes. eyes. Dead eyes. It is a bad one. Mm -hmm. Had a great weekend. Lots of time on the beach and got a ton of sleep. So I'm I feel great for a Monday. He's still laughing. Uh, How was your weekend? Yeah, I would love to. I'm free Friday and Saturday if that works for you. Well, that's good. He gave you a couple day gave very specific options. Love that. Misspelled too. Sounds like a chill weekend. I'm jealous, lol. My weekend was good. Spent it in Temecula with some of my friends. Friday works for me. You gave him that smiley face right back. That's a good one. The normal smiley face. Nice. Never been there. I've been, I've heard good things. Perfect. I'm free anytime after 6 p.m. Are you going, uh, are you more into wine or getting cocktails? Did you respond to that? Yeah, I said something like cocktails sound great or something. And then, per- okay, then you, then you, sounds good. Just check in and make sure our plan's still on. Hey, yep. Uh, oh, then, okay. So, so this is the kicker. So the first date, our date was at like 7.30 and uh, he never checked in that day or morning or afternoon for the date. And I ended up writing out a text at like 5.30 and I was like, I'm going to send this text at six. And he ended up texting at like, 545. Hey, are we still good for 730? And I was like, yes, sounds great. And then the second date, which was the May 20th text that you guys have, I texted at 535 because our date was at 630. So I would have to leave at like six. And I texted because I didn't hear from him all like, you know, like two since we texted on Tuesday. That's why I said, hey, just checking in to make sure our plans are still on. And I was like, I literally was like, I'm going to get ghosted for the second date. Like, I was so convinced. Why? And Why? Why'd you? I mean... Because I feel like guys should, or at least in the past, like guys have been like in the morning or afternoon, hey, or the day before, hey, are we still good for tomorrow? Or are we still good for? Yeah, I mean that would like, definitely. Tonight? But like, why is it? Why is it specific to the guy? I mean, why didn't? Why isn't one of you just doing it earlier? Well, because she's done everything else. 
<laughs> she said to make every day <laughs> no, no, sense. I, I, I know, but she's 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 pursuing him. I mean, yeah. she wants right. to date him. I mean, she's Jason. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so saying, I, like, I just assume, I assume you just psyched yourself date. out, I guess yes. is what I'm oh, saying. Oh, for sure. For sure. But I was I, like, oh my God, he hasn't texted me. I would do the same. It's been four days. You made a plan four days ago. And then mm-hmm. he hasn't said a thing until 30 minutes before you have to leave. I would be like. And after after oh. I texted to make sure that we were still going. And then he goes, yeah, I just got done getting ready. And he replied like 20 minutes later. So he replied like almost 6 p.m. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I mean, but he was, in fact, getting ready. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm just like, I'm also, if the dates have been good and the chemistry has been good, I just would hope that, like, he has something to say within four days. Oh. KP is over him. But <laughs> you want a, you want another shot on a, a date, third date. Well, I'm just wondering, like, I've already reached out the first time after Coachella to see if he wanted to reschedule the first date after his car getting broken into. And then I reached out after he was like, oh, after our first date. And he was like, I have a busy week, but let's touch base. So I pretty much like initiated the second date, if you want to call it that, you know? Okay, that's fine. And now I'm like, do I reach out again? And I'm like, you know, obviously I think he's, I don't remember when he's gone, but I'm pretty sure he's gone like all week. So I'm like, do I just like give up on the kid? And if he wants to reach out to me, like he have reaches out. And we, yeah, on the second date. Okay. Uh, so why do you want to hang out with him again? I I think he's awesome. Like, I think the yeah. first date, and he was, like, honestly my first hinge date. So I was expecting it to go, like, He's not... your very first hinge date. Is your first time, like, on, on dating apps? N- yeah, on dating apps. But going on a hinge date, yeah. Because I've either not gone because I'm like, no, or it just hasn't worked out. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I think if... I think there's nothing wrong with going out with him again. I think just have reasonable expectations. Like he's. He sucks. <laughs> well, I think he's just very out of sight, out of mind at best. I think he's like a little like yeah. in person, super in it. If you're not around though, kind of forgets you exist. He has no object permanence. He's a baby. <laughs> he's just very, he's <laughs> casually dating and. Yeah. It's not just him. I think this is just the new normal of. Of how people, not just guys, are interacting in between dates often, unless they get like incredibly excited and knocked off their feet. But that's not necessarily a lot to go on, you know, because it could be, you know, maybe they're excited for all the wrong reasons. So, yeah, if you are interested in them, I, here's what I think the biggest takeaway is like I think you're spending too much time keeping score about like what you're doing or how often you're reaching out and psyching yourself mm-hmm. out like right now you know you're excited about him and we don't know how he feels about you mm-hmm. so if you want to hang out with him I definitely think you should like stop worrying about how much he is like participating mm-hmm. early on in texting just because like you know you're excited and we just don't really know what this is yet yeah. You might have yeah. to just be his schedule assistant for a bit and just be like, Tuesday at six, you around? Like you might have to just spell the dates and times out. If he's great in person, then yeah, maybe it's worth it to just be like, I'll just schedule our dates and that's just my role. And he shows up and is good. At least at first. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. like if you go on a third date with him, then maybe on date three, you know, you've hooked up, you're on a third date. And maybe at this point you have decided that you want to get some information from him mm-hmm. and you want to see where he's going. And on a third date, like at the end of the, if you go on a third date and at the end mm-hmm. of the third date, you're thinking the same thing after date one and two, I'm, I'm having a really nice time. This guy's great. Then you can just say, Hey, I'm re- like, mm-hmm. I really enjoy getting to know you. And like, I'd like to, I mean, I want to like, I'd like to hang out with you like more often and just put yourself out yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like it kind of throws me off how like sometimes you're super responsive via text, but then like don't reach out. I wouldn't even say that yet because <gasps> there, there's no yeah. expectations between the two of them now. They've de- they've yeah. they've they've set up nothing. He's not doing anything wrong. He's just doing what he's doing. Yeah, I guess I'm like you've given him so much rope here of like the comedy show even, which is a red flag to go to a comedy show as a comedian. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but no, he you were like you'll have to tell me what you think. Like that's such an alley oop of right. just like. You're going to a place. I'm interested. Here's a perfect text you can send. And I think you've done that a few times of just like you're remembering all this stuff about him, that he's going surfing, about this and this. 
And he just doesn't seem to text unless you kind of corner him. So, Mm -hmm. but that's why I'm like, I don't want to like, I feel like embarrassed to keep like making such an effort. if like, I don't see his effort there. Like, unless we're like in person, like, you know, and then I just like feel like an idiot. I think Nick's right though. I think like third day, so low stakes. And then you can be like, Hey, what's (laughs) just your ego. No one cares. You know what I'm saying? Who is he? Who is he telling? Mm -hmm. It's not like he's going around me. Like there's this girl I'm going out with and boy, she just keeps blowing me up, but I'm going out with her for like, out of so interested. Yeah. She's like, no one's that's that conversation is not happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like in reality, what he is, is kind of like, probably like an aloof fuck boy who's like down who whose biggest priority right now is his buddies and his surfboard and he's down to open to like meeting women and going on dates and like maybe having sex and one of these women he's probably thinking is going to like I'll I'll want to date someday but that's going to be a process. Yeah, and push past yeah. all of his things. Yeah. yeah. So you have to decide whether a right off the bat that is someone you're interested in even though you've had two nights nice dates. He's not doing anything wrong. That's just like, you just have to know what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. If you get on a third date, because it sounds like if you text him, he'll probably go out with you again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? If you make yourself available and you schedule the date, he'll be down for for probably. Right? Yeah. And then you have to ask yourself, when you go on this third date, what do you want to do? And, yeah. and you have to, like, and if you listen to the show, you never ask him what he wants. Just tell him what you want and what you're right. interested in and then see what he says. I feel like a lot of times in this, in, in, in people in your shoes will do that thing. They'll, like, nag and, like, they'll, like, say something. And all of a sudden you're like, well, did I do something wrong? And it's just like, you know, no. Nah. Yeah. I, mean, I Yes. And I wish dating wasn't like this nowadays, but it, this is how it's become. In a far more casual kind of laissez-faire, feel it out, just go on dates and see where it goes and take it slow. So, And I don't even need, like, I don't need him and I don't want him to text me all the time. But like, like you said, when I'm like, oh, let me know how the Mm -hmm. bar goes, like, because I'm the one that was like, you should try this bar. Like, I'd love for him to text me after he goes or whatever. And it's like, oh, it was amazing. And like that be it, you know, but. Yeah, Yeah, that's the thing. You're trying to get him to like. You're trying to like massage this like text conversation with him. Yeah. You know, like that that's not gonna gonna want to text. Yeah. Here's what I think you should text though. If you, you have a habit of like recommend recommending places, I would text him, be like, hey, there's this place I wanna go. Let's go this weekend. Are you free? Mm. Like when are you like we should check this place out? Yeah. And see what he says. Yeah. And then on the date, if you have a good time. Other than like you've had fun, like start thinking about what, you, like, do you really like this guy? Yeah, it might not be long term compatible if this is if he this is the way oh. he's just always going to be, and like mm-hmm. oh, I just wait for life to come to me, or like yeah. you know, then it might just not. I yeah, he's not doing anything wrong, like Nick said, but it might not be right for you. Totally right. Yeah, I agree. That's what I'm starting to to realize. That's why I'm like, why am I like so well, obviously I'm like bothered because like I like him so. Yeah. Well, I would say I would. You're interested in him. You don't even know if you like I'm him. I'm interested. Mm-hmm. I'm interested like, in him for sure. You've had yes. two dates with like a guy who's kind of nice and spacey. Yep. So <laughs> we're interested. <laughs> we don't like him yet. We're interested. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You should yeah. definitely go into like date three, like trying to figure out if you do like him. And you should be a little bit more of a skeptic. You know? Yeah. So you think I should reach out again? I think if you want, if you're still interested in them, I think it's totally fine to reach out. No one cares. Only your ego. Like no mm. one's having these conversations. No one's judging you. He's not going to be like, he, he clearly is down for people to follow up with him. Yeah. Yeah. And then worst case, if he like, I have worse, worst case is like, he doesn't say anything or he's just like not interested, whatever. But you were about to leave it anyway, right? If you walked away right now, there'd be nothing else anyway. So might as yeah. well try one last time if it is good in person. If he doesn't respond the same day, I wouldn't go on the third date. Ooh, love that. The same day. Oh, okay. Interesting. You know, text him like early afternoon and give him the rest of the night. Give him mm-hmm. like that day. I think that's being okay. generous. I think he should text back right away mm-hmm. within an hour or two. Yeah. Like he's he's on a trip, so I could easily, and I don't remember when he's back, but like I could easily text him like next week and be like, hope your trip was amazing. He's like, on a trip right now? But it's been 10 I, days. I think he... He came, he was on a trip for Memorial Weekend, then he's coming back and he's here for like two days and then he goes like out of the country. 
that's like all of June, pretty much. You know what I mean? That's why I'm like, okay. Yeah, I can't this, guy, like... this guy lived in Venice. He's got a surfboard. He's backpacking <laughs> across the world. Like this guy is not looking he's for a girlfriend. He's lolling. He's putting no. emojis left and right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like everything's cool with this yeah. guy. He's not bothered by anything. No, he's not. You know, he reminds me Wait. of Dean. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm picturing my friend Dean. Mm -hmm. If you think he's back now, text him and be like, hey, I'll be had fun. There's this place I want to check out before you leave. Let's go. <laughs> no, but seriously, because like th th this guy is riddled with like, not, he's not doing anything wrong, but he's riddled with red flags of like why he's probably a waste of your time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And not that there's yeah. anything wrong with him, but he's just got to have other priorities going on in his life that like don't include you. So right. if he's willing to fit you in between like uh, one trip and another trip, that shows that maybe there's some interest there. And if he's not, then it's like you're really going to be like on his schedule. Yep. And you're you're better yeah. off just like, you know. Yeah. Going back on Hinge. Agreed. But I think you're wasting a lot of your energy on someone who's not wasting any of his yeah yeah i think that's how like my roommates think of it too because like obviously i'm like what the heck still haven't heard from him he just might be at a much slower place of willing to like prioritize someone that's fine and th the truth is you're probably getting a little ahead of yourself by saying things like i like this guy when like right. you've been on two nice dates yeah and, and it, i'm like still dating there's too, gotta which, be mm -hmm. some pressure you're applying yourself for it being your first hinge date and wanting it to work out so you don't have to go back on there there must <laughs> you know like i'm sure yeah. i'm sure there's a little bit of like you know what that would have been great to just one and done it right <laughs> see where it goes but like try not to don't put so much pressure on yourself try not to overanalyze it stop with the <laughs> emojis <laughs> <laughs> It's my biggest takeaway. You know, stop worrying about you te texting so much. If you like, hey, we're we still on for tonight. That's fine. And send it like <laughs> earlier in the day, not a 45 minutes before, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, that was because I was hoping that he would check in, but. This nobody... guy, this guy is worried about nothing. I know. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Hopefully that was helpful. Yes, it was. Thanks, you guys. All right. Take Thanks. care. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. He's the, that classic Venice guy who's like picked up surfing, you know, has his job, hangs out with his buddies. He's 28. He's it's like, so noncommittal. It's so. Yeah. That 28 year old Venice guy is like a 19 year old Wisconsin guy. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely true. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah, life will just come to me and then I'll say yes. But yeah. I'm like, he will never, yeah. never plan it out. I feel like that's why there's this like toxic chase narrative is because mm -hmm. I feel like with guys like that it is only in my experience to. it's been when you somehow like make it feel like you're it's not readily available like kind of like wave it and then take it away that they'll actually engage and like it will like activate something within them but which is not healthy it, or do good you think it's like a I don't think it's planned I think it's really I think he really doesn't care like it's just I think more he's waiting I think to your point he's waiting for the one that's gonna make him interested enough to want to plan. Yeah. And he's probably not even thinking about that. It's just right now his priorities, yes. priorities are his job, his buddies, and his surfboard and not necessarily that order. And it's just like he's down to meet cool people, women, go yeah. on dates. And the more chill and casual you are, the more he's interested in continuing to hang out with that person, not necessarily prioritize that person. But someday some person yeah. is going to tell him that they want to be made a priority by this guy and he, someone will, and he will finally do it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not gender exclusive anymore. It's like chase who you want. Chase who, if you're excited, you chase because yep. guys aren't chasing as much anymore. Yeah. Not the fuck boys, mm -hmm. surfboards in Venice. Lace up your sneakers, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, KP, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having Such me. Such a delight. Thanks. Where can my audience find you? Uh, TikTok, Instagram. Yeah, TikTok and Instagram, same handle, but TikTok's where I'm, I've been playing lately, uh, and the handle is KP, if that's cool. It's a really good follow. Thank you're you. you're very f funny. Uh, any Anywhere else people might be able to enjoy the things that you're doing? I do some live performing in LA with Ooh. my group Best Actress if you like uh, if you like live comedy shows. Ooh, wonderful. Where can they find that? On my Instagram, I'll post about it, but we have a show on Elysian at the Elysian Theater June 7th. So Ooh, that'll wonderful. be fun. Go yeah. check that out if you're in LA. Yeah. 
Thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknickacastme.com. Cats with a K. Tomorrow we got Fibula, Connor slash Connor Wood, uh, back with us to uh, I just debate with him why he decided to make me feel bad about Yeah, the cuckold <laughs> reckoning. <laughs> the cuckold reckoning. Get him. Yeah. <laughs> Drag had, him to hell. We had a game. No, nah, it's all fun and games. Team Nick. Uh, <laughs> No, it's Team Nick. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we're with Connor Fibula tomorrow. Uh, until then, have a great uh, day. And, uh, bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick, especially if you're looking for some relationship stories and relationship advice, as well as our Wednesday interviews with your favorite celebrities and experts. See you next time.